Be glad you just clicked on this video because I'm fixing to blow your mind. Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. Up, everybody's having a great week. You are not gonna wanna miss this video because I'm fixing to tell you how you are being screwed at the pump. But before we get into today's video, if you're a fan of saving time, money, and frustration while fixing your own small engine equipment while watching in-depth tutorials, you've come to the right place because that's what I do. I upload a couple times a week, and if that sounds interesting, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell, and please leave a comment. I love to read through the comments, and I'll reply to all the early commenters. So last week I got to go to Echo Update School, which you go to once a year, that way you can still be a service technician. And it's pretty cool because you get to see some of the other shop owners, you hear their points and views on things, and you get to learn a little bit. Sometimes we get to tear down new equipment. This year was sort of humdrum. We just went over what different scored pistons look like, but you know, the new people, they needed to know that, so it was pretty cool. But another shop owner mentioned something and it blew my mind, and I bet you don't know about it either. Now for years, I have believed that customers were straight up lying to me. Could you believe that? Customers lie? No, no, never. <laughs> but the fact was, is I have to smell a customer's gas anytime I'm working on their machine. And I'm pretty good at it. I mean, don't think I'm a gas sniffer or anything like that, but to you know, know if I'm gonna dump the customer's gas or not, a lot of times I don't wanna get rid of their brand new fresh fuel, but uh, I can just, pop the cap a lot of times until that stuff's got to go. But sometimes, you know, it's on the fence. Is it good? Is it not? I got to get my nose in there and check. So I'm pretty good at telling you whether it's E85, whether it's, you know, ethanol fuel, whether it's non-ethanol fuel, whether it's true fuel, whether it's, you know, something else, I can tell you. But so many times I would have the customer come pick their equipment up and tell them, yeah, it, it just didn't want to run on your fuel. It won't run on that E85 stuff or it doesn't want to run on this or that. And they would say, you know, I just went to the gas station and pumped regular gas. I'd ask them, what gas station do you use? I mean, we're a small town. There's not, you know, too many gas stations. And it got to a point where there was two different gas stations that I noticed that there are, I had multiple customers come from with machines that their machine would not run on the gas that was in it, but I put my gas in it and it would. So I actually kept a little piece of paper behind the counter so they didn't think I was lying to them and I'd pull it up and I'd say, this gas station, yeah, that's the one you went to. See, we have a little note here that says, there's two gas stations in town that small engines will not run on from this gas station and this gas station. But I didn't know really why. I mean, I knew that one of those gas stations sold the E85 and sometimes the customers would come in and I'd tell them, you've got E85 in there? And they'd say, no, I, I just pumped regular gas and I straight up thought they were lying because my nose works and I know what it smells like. But now I found out they might have been telling me the truth, telling me that they pumped 93 or 89 and accidentally got E10 or E85. How is that possible, I thought? Well, it's very possible. So the other shop owner in class, he mentioned that whatever is left in the hose at the gas station from the last person that purchased gas, that's what you get the first third of a gallon in your next purchase. So if somebody gets E85, which is like 51 to 85% ethanol, straight up ethanol, and they get done pumping, and the next person comes up, and they have a little one gallon can, and they're trying to get ethanol free fuel, and that pump is connected to the same system as that E85. Now some of them are split up, and I'm gonna show you that, but some of them are on the same wand with the same hose. That gas always stays in the hose. It immediately comes out as you pump it. And it, there's a shutoff in the ground where, you know, things connect to that same hose. But that sometimes a third of a gallon or more of gas from the last person goes into whatever you're putting it in. So a third of E85 and a gallon of ethanol free fuel, you're getting a ton of ethanol. So I always thought that gas stations had separate tanks for each grade of gasoline that they had. Well, that is not the case. If they have 93 on their pump and they also have 87 and 89 on their pump, they don't, might not have an 89 tank there. They might mix their 93 and their 87 to make 89. 
Now, sometimes those pumps are even connected to one that is ethanol free. So it doesn't exactly blend anything with it, but it doesn't stop it off either. It still has that ethanol gas in the hose on the line going all the way into the ground to the shutoff before your ethanol free fuel starts getting pumped up. Now, commercial people, they're probably never gonna have an issue with this because they buy so much gas and they use it so quickly that they're never even gonna tell the difference. But a homeowner that might only use their weeds trimmer or their chainsaw maybe a few times a year to eight times a year, they're only gonna be buying one gallon of gas at a time. And if you go to a pump that shares a wand with 89 or the E85 or the E10 and it's on the same wand, it is quite possible that you're going to be getting that fuel before you get your ethanol free fuel and not even know it. Now, of course, I wouldn't be saying all this unless I experimented myself and went and checked it out. So Ron and I went down to the local Wally G Mart and we picked up some gas cans. Next, we headed over to the gas pumps and we pumped in some regular 89. First, we went ahead and put it in our car, about a gallon or two. Then we filled up a tank with that 89, just so we can have our control and know exactly how much ethanol is in that. Next, we grabbed another tank and we turned it to the ethanol free fuel and started pumping. It immediately came out of the spout. We filled it up just so we could test. We didn't stop there either. We went to another gas station that offered ethanol free fuel and we went ahead and pumped a gallon or two into our car. We grabbed another gas can. We put it on ethanol free and pumped it into that gas can. Now let's test them and see how much ethanol we have. I did go to Amazon and I bought a ethanol testing kit, which is really just a, <laughs> you know, any kind of orifice that will hold something that you could see through. You could actually draw your own line on it if you want, but this already has the lines telling you if it's 5, 10, 20% and so on. It's very simple to use. We're just going to fill it up with water to this blue line right here. We're going to put in the gas that we're gonna be testing all the way up to this top line. We're gonna put the lid on, we're gonna shake it vigorously, and we're gonna let it sit for five minutes. Once you see the difference in how far the water goes up, because the water actually attaches to the ethanol and draws it down with it, because water is heavier than gasoline, and if it moves up above this blue line, anything it moves up, that's ethanol. And we'll be able to see exactly how much ethanol is in that gasoline. All right, so we're going to put some water in here. I'm gonna make a mess. And make sure to make it just go to the blue line perfectly. Where are we at there? We are a little bit above. Let's pour a little bit out. I think we're perfect right there. Okay, let me bring you in so you can see how close we are. Okay, so as you can see here, I have that water line. I'll jiggle it a little bit. You can see it is perfectly filled up to the blue line. All right, I'm gonna add my gasoline and I hate these gas tanks with a passion. Thanks government for doing all this. I think you've got to flip it up and push and oh my gosh. I'm, how am I gonna do that and hold this at the same time? I don't know, let's see if I can do this. Oh, I gotta have a strong thumb to do that. Oh, I might make a mess. Okay, wow, I didn't spill a, oh, I did. I spilled a drop, okay. <laughs> so we're going to put the lid on there. Now this is the 87 octane, okay? And we're gonna shake it up. All right, we're gonna let it sit. And we're gonna come back in five minutes. And check this out, guys. If you live in California, there is actually a class action lawsuit right now that you can maybe get a few pennies back for your woes. In August of 2022, California resident Richard A. Davis has filed a class action antitrust case against several big oil companies alleging violations of the antitrust laws of the United States. 
He says, California drivers pay more to fill up their gas tanks with premium gasolines than consumers in any other state and have for years. It's a matter of choice on premium gasoline. However, the last dude who filled up with El Cheapo gas means that you may get about one third a gallon of 87 octane regular or up to a full gallon depending on the length of the gas pump hose. The longer the hose, the higher level combination you get. Even worse, it's like playing Russian roulette at the gas pump. The worst scenario would be the $2 a gallon E85 blend known as flex fuel that consists of 51% to 85% ethanol. So guys, you've got to be checking that pump whenever you're getting ethanol free fuel to know if it is separated from the rest of them or if it's a single entity and you know you're getting ethanol free fuel. For example, guys, check out this pump. All three grades of gas on the right side go to the same hose. So you might be thinking you're getting 89 octane when actually the first third of a gallon or more could be E85. And that is not good. All right, so we've let the 87 octane sit for five minutes. And as you can see, what we would expect, it is right below the 10% ethanol level. So we know we have pretty much 9% ethanol in this gasoline. Now let's test our ethanol free fuel. Fill our water up. All right, I thought the light shining on it would let you see better. So we've got it perfectly at the blue line. All right, so we're done with the 87 test. We're doing the ethanol free test and if I can do this stinking thing. Oh my gosh, it's so difficult to hold with one thumb. It's like they don't make it for somebody with a small thumb. And it never comes out. Oh my gosh, I'm not doing it right. Damn government. I don't have the strength to do this thing. This is ridiculous. Oh my God. <gasps> okay. Press, press, press. And this is better, right? Big government, this is what we need. A damn child-proof BS. Oh, oh. Okay, calm, calm. Okay, I can do this. Place. Oh, okay. Man, I don't think I was breathing when I did that. Okay. Shake it up. And we'll let it sit. Well, there it is, guys. You've been thinking you've been getting ethanol free fuel all this time and you have no idea. This is a little bit over, right on the line, pretty much 5% ethanol fuel. So it is not ethanol free at all. And even though I really don't wanna do this test again and spill gas all over the place, I'm going to for the sake of science and we're gonna try that last one that we got. We didn't get the another control, we just got the ethanol free fuel from the pump after we pumped a couple gallons of the 87 into our car. So I'm pretty sure the results are gonna be the same, but let's find out. All right, so once again, we'll move these over here. We will fill our test container up with water. And I got too much. We are perfect again. I'm sure y'all just believe me. We're perfect. And we are going to 
put this one in. Make sure we got that tightened down. I mean, it would be one thing if I could palm it like this and pour it into something, but if you're holding something, <laughs> yeah, this is the worst gas can I've ever tried to use. So, Whoa. it comes out so weird because it's got this splash guard inside of it. So I thought I could use my turkey baster to just suck some out. Oh no. Can't get in there. Okay. Last but not least. Shake it up. And let it sit. Uh, well guys, that about sums it up. It is exactly the same as the last batch we tried and it is right above the 5% mark. So yeah, there is ethanol in it for sure. So guys, I hope this helped you out. If you're gonna be getting ethanol-free fuel, find a pump that is designated only ethanol-free fuel, or if you have a pump that's split, maybe pump a couple gallons of ethanol-free into your vehicle before you go pumping it into your one or two gallon tank. That way you know for sure that you're getting what you're paying for. So hopefully this video saves you time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found us on Facebook yet, find us at facebook.com slash chicanic. Find me on Instagram at the real chicanic or find us at chicanic.com where you get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks guys and have a great day.